This Chef's Kitchen podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download now at audiblepodcast.com slash the chef's kitchen. We're here at the Mila Gallery in Princeton, New Jersey, celebrating Philadelphia Magazine's Guide to Holiday Entertainment. And now I'm joined by Chef Wyatt Lash of the Whip Tavern in Coatesville, PA. Our feel with the holidays is you want to try and make it a little more sophisticated than usual. Yes. Um, so what we're going to be starting off with is our Beef Wellington. And Beef Wellington is very versatile because you can make it any size you want. You can do a whole tenderloin or you can do fillets, which I'm going to show. This is our fillet. We're going to cut it down in the smaller cubes. Okay. A little bit of oil. Vegetable oil? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, and there's nothing better than a flaky crust, some fillet and a mushroom duck cell, which I'm going to get to next. Okay. So you're going to start off by searing your beef. And what this is going to do is this is going to lock in your juices so that when you cook it, you're not going to have... Dry meat, right? Well, dry meat, but you don't want to get a soggy crust. So next is going to be our mushroom duck cell. So these are and white fortunate enough mushrooms? for us, we are located in an area where mushrooms Oh, mushroom, mushroom capital, capital of the world. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, very yes. close to, you know, very uh, famous Longwood Gardens. Yes, uh, Longwood Gardens. I believe you're seven miles from. We are. We're seven Gardens. miles north, um, and Longwood attracts such an array of people that we always try to accommodate them as well. Very popular attraction during the holidays. What you want to do is you want to cook this uh, till it's very tender. Uh, you want to cook all the liquids out. Okay. Then we're going to put it in a food processor and grind it down so that it looks like this. This is what we want it to look like. This is your duck cell. Okay. Okay. So, puff pastry. You can puff get it pastry. anywhere at the store. In the freezer aisle, yes. right? Okay. okay. So we want it kinda. thawed? Uh, yes, you want it thawed so that you can kind of stretch it out like I'm doing here. A little bit of egg, you're gonna baste it around the edges. Okay. So one piece of seared beef. Yes. Some pate. This is store-bought pate, but which useful for, for us at home. a consumer can get it pretty much anywhere. Yes. And for this, it was less than $10. You want to fold it, okay? And the key to puff pastry is that you don't want to get more than two wraps. Ah, okay. So you want to trim it up. We don't want too thick of a, of a crust, Correct. I guess. Okay. Correct. I'm going to fold it down, uh, and then you just want to baste it to get some color To create your that nice pastry. brown. Correct. Okay. All right. And then they're going to go in the oven about 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. And what you're looking to do is get about medium rare. It's okay. perfect temperature. Next, we're going to go to a baked brie. Baked brie. And this is our apple cranberry compote. So you're going to take your apples, you're going to core them, dice them, dry cranberries. You can use fresh if you like, but I prefer dry because of the texture that they have mm -hmm. after they cook. They feel chewy. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, some sugar. Some brandy. And you can spice that up a little bit with some apple pucker if you want to get Ooh, a little creative. Oh, yes. That would taste wonderful. And then what you're going to do is you're going to reduce that down to a syrupy consistency. Okay. okay. And you just added some water to that, right? Yes, I okay. did. I did. Just to give it enough of a syrup. Sure. And then we have our brie. And brie you can pretty much get anywhere. It's very easy. Oh yes, to get. It's in almost every supermarket now. So we have our brie. We're gonna flour it. Ah. So we want to cut it into pot, like pie slices yes. and then dredge it in flour. Some egg wash. Okay. This is pecans. pecans. And what we did was we toasted our pecans. You always want to toast. Uh, any kind of nuts before you chop them up. Mm -hmm. uh, it really brings out the oils and the flavors in them. And you just want to get a good coat on it because otherwise, um, if you kind of forget about them in the oven, it'll tend to leak out all over the place. Ah, okay. So this is definitely something you want to keep an eye on yes. in the oven. Yes. So about how long in the oven does this take? Uh, these take about five minutes. So you really want to uh, time them. Absolutely. With stay in the kitchen. Else. When right. those are in, stay in the kitchen. <laughs> right? So what we have here is our Wellington. Remarkably easy recipe for Wellington. Absolutely. I can't believe it. Absolutely. And so very impressive to serve to your guests. And then this is our break. Excellent.
this compote, you're more than welcome to serve hot or cold. Okay. Uh, I prefer to serve it cold. And then what we have here is our St. Pete's Old Porter. Yes. And Fuller's ESB. And this is probably one of my favorites. So. And this you, you serve in the uh, tavern? Yes, we do. Looks wonderful and just a marvelous presentation. Mm. Very, very good. Very good. Chef, please. Oh, absolutely. Indulge like I am, and I'll taste the brie. If you really want to impress your friends, this is yes. the way to go. A Wellington. Tell, tell them you're serving a Wellington, <laughs> and they will go crazy. Absolutely. Mmm. That is outstanding. Pecan crusted brie with that beautiful apple chutney. Really fantastic. Thank you so much, Chef Wyatt Lash for joining us today and sharing some magnificent recipes for our holiday meals. Happy holidays to you. This Chef's Kitchen podcast was brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download now at audiblepodcast.com slash the chef's kitchen. Log on now for over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player.